One of the things I I really I passionately hate about the construct of genre is that it doesn't know what it wants to be. When people think of a genre, they think of a style of music, right? You know, you say Kwaito is a genre, I'm a piano is a genre, but like let's really think about it guys. What are we really talking about? Are we talking about the way that something sounds? Or are we talking about the particular movement of artists who are termed under a certain umbrella because of some cultural phenomena, because of some slang term? What are we talking about? Because if A, genre is a kind of sound, then it defeats the point of the term. Because if we're going to think about any genre, let's think about jazz, there are various sounds within the scope of what is considered jazz. If you could look at rap, if you could look at any particular genre that you think is supposed to be about a sound, every time you think you know what it sounds like, somebody redefines or stretches what it could be. To a point where the question of whether or not it is still that thing, like in the case of trap and rap, becomes a very important thing to ask. And the reason why genre is so problematic is exactly because of that. It doesn't clearly mark out what we're defining. Because if it's a sound, it's a term that doesn't outline when it stops becoming different. It's a term that doesn't outline how these supposed boundaries of a particular sound are even reached to begin with. Who says this is only jazz and it can't be something else? Because if you ask the artist, they're never trying to do a sound. The artist is always speaking from a broad variety of influences which, when categorized under some kind of market convenience, create problems for how the artist is introduced to an audience. Because the jazz artist is going to be introduced to jazz folk. So I'm here to say Genre stupid, let's kill it. Why am I talking about genre? South Africa has had a very relentless resistance and even dismissal towards the idea of genre. Kwaito is not a sound. It's some kind of journalistic term that was created to basket a whole bunch of movements. De Gong, that Bongo Muffin said they did. Gaz, that TKZ said they did. And yet, we call them Guaido artists. The politics of this term and what it's meant and what it continues to mean is something South African artists really don't give a shit about. And yet, industry professionals insist on submitting the artists too. Why? Because then you get artists like the one whose review I am very proud to do. Sinom Solo. In South Africa, the question of the vocalist is an interesting one because you look at, you know, the Western market with its classical categorizations that are mainly based on socioeconomic and as a result, very racial categorizations. We all know urban music is just some kind of slip-in term for black or ghetto. We all know that hip-hop isn't really a sound, but it was a culture, but the term was very convenient for, again, white journalistic media to use as an umbrella term for really different kinds of rap music. So, when it comes to singers, we have this impulsive urge whenever somebody sings to place them under the vague category of R&B. Now, what is R&B? You know, rhythm and blues? That's everything. What sound doesn't have rhythm? What sound doesn't capture the blues of the existential spirit of what we're all going through? There is a blues in piano. There is a blues in Maskandi. There is a blues in electronic dance music, old school, progressive rock, pop. My point is maybe we should start asking ourselves what we mean when we say these terms so we can know if we're really referring to the artists in ways that cage them or free them. That's another point. Maybe it needs a whole episode. What I'm saying is I think it's the perfect segue 
into a vocalist like Sinom Solo, where South Africa's tradition of Abanda Batulayo is directly linked to our indigenous tones and our melodies. Stratamia is a style of singing that emerges from the rulers of Gwazulu Natal. Maskandi is a musical style that really refers to the way that Zulu hostel, uh, you know, players, guitar players used to reinvent the way that the guitar was played and the Afrikaans term musician, Muskant, was then introduced as a label to kind of capture the musical prowess of these emerging black guitarists whose vocal style was also something that was linked to the Stratamia sound, vocally. Now, Sino Solo is from the Eastern Cape, but I'm going into this cultural baggage because I feel we've forgotten how to unpack the cultural aspect of the music. Pop culture just says, here's a product, eat it up, without us looking at the hows, the wheres, and the whys. And this is not some kind of intellectual exercise that I'm forcing the audience to do. It's actually a very interesting part of trying to understand the artists themselves. I would go as far as saying, you cannot fully understand an artist if you don't try to at least understand their cultural context. Because in the case of Sinom Solo, here is an artist whose musical emergence in the South African landscape literally comes through the image of Sun L musician, who practically discovers Sino online, a connection happens, the communication leads to him signing under Sun L. He releases his first project, which really doesn't speak for what he's trying to do yet, and I'll tell you how. Because Sun L musician in himself has a categorized sound that we all know when we hear that sound. <laughs> right? Sinom Solo is taken in the umbrella of that. Something tells me he is happy to be there, but he is suffocated by a very particular vision that he shares but doesn't happen to be his. He releases another project trying to extend how far he can go, but then it eventually leads to him and Sun L parting ways. Whether this was amicable or somewhat controversial, we are yet to get the full scope. But where we are is 2024. Sino Solo releases the project, Guam which I feel, even in its name, is saying two things to us. He's finally at a place where he wants to take us to where he comes from. He wants to take us to where he calls home. Not the structure, not the physical, uh, necessarily spatial dynamic, although that's there. But it is the culture attached to the space. It is what are the sounds that make up Sinon Solo's musical influences. This is Guam in that sense. But it's also Guam in the sense that he's finally doing what he wants. He's finally doing something that he feels he can stand for, thoroughly fight for, and you know, as they say today, stand on business for. Die on the hill for. Guam is a beautiful story. It starts off, literally. It feels like a sunrise in, you know, Eastern Cape rural Flagstaff, where he's from, by the way. This album aesthetically, sonically, and in all other ways captures this wide, open, ambient, very naturalistic sound that you would imagine if who says Lalini somewhere and your scope of vision is further than what a city can give you with its congested busyness. This album has room to breathe. You feel like you can relax. I mean, even when the intro opens up, you're treated by, you know, these chiming shakers and a beautiful restless spirit that says, wake up, you're about to get your heart taken on a journey. It goes step by step and it takes us through something also historical. I feel like this was very intentional on Sinom Solo and the team's part that this project is a story of waking up in the dawn of a new musical sound and taking us to where we are but it's also waking up in the environment taking in the early morning breeze going about your day and then once it's day late knowing that it's about to go down you're about to go into an elevated threshold it, it's a builder it's kind of like a good day starts off nice and relaxed but starts to echo you into something very very transcendental and I think from a cultural, from a sonic, 
and also like a messaging perspective this is what the project does because when you look at the track list it's literally a story it's Sino's own individual story it's the story of South African music as it has moved through its vocalist but it's also a story of where South Africa is musically right now let me put this down for you so the intro which is by God my favorite joint because Man, what last have you heard intros that are actually technically full-on songs? They're not just fillers. Because sometimes artists will become a little bit creatively slacking and create these very unnecessary filters between songs in order to try and make projects that aren't necessarily cohesive find glue to stick them together. But a real intro is something that literally introduces you to where you are going. This song, this is a song in itself, and I mean, it, it takes the rhythm in a place that borrows from some of the rhythms that we're at in terms of the log drum and what it's done in the Ama Piano space. But also, if you look at South African vocalists, they have been historically categorized in this place of like Afro pop, again with these categories, you know, and again, Afro pop feels like the African version of RB. It's a very poor way. Of trying to translate what's going on with vocalists because vocalists have no sound they add their dynamics to whatever musical overture makes sense so it's difficult to say Ndando was some kind of afro pop artist he was a vocalist it's difficult to say Smongile Kumalo was a jazz vocalist because he has lended herself to different sounds whichever South African vocalists you think of it is not the sound. It is what they are trying to determine with their own voices as they move into these different sounds. The sounds themselves matter. But if you understand again the context of the story that's being tried that, that 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 is being told. So I'm gonna repeat something. I will maybe that is that you can write it here. Let's kill genre and let's think about music in two ways. Let's think about where the music is moving. So the sound is always attached to a movement. And let's think about the way the artist is headed. So there's vision and there's movement. If you understand the artist's vision and the movement that they are choosing to tell that vision, you understand music. And I know this is problematic because you can't have neat little awards where we can give best Afro pop artist to. But those were useless to begin with. Because you're taking something which was essentially a journey towards freedom and trying to imprison it in a sound where you even give awards for honoring a particular kind of sound when it wasn't a sound to begin with. Afropop simply means the African popular. Everybody who's famous and doing music in South Africa is Afropop because they're African and if they're really mass market, they're popular. Therefore, Afropop is not a sound. Again, guys, genre doesn't work, especially in the case of Sinom Solo, who takes us into the title track, Guam, borrowing in some of the other other very rebellious and revolutionary vocalists right now you know you're talking about um, Tando Zid oh my god something is coming on her too and it takes us into Emma Kaya another one of my favorite tracks Sino in this one I think is taking us to the center of what this is from the memories of his own upbringing but also it echoes into what do you call home doesn't home have to do with warmth settlement being able to be somewhere where the risk is worth taking. And that is what I feel is safety. So Sinom Solo plays into risks that he feels are worth standing up for. Even taking us to Amahemhe with Donald, which I think is very intentional. Because Sinom Solo is taking us on this journey using iconic South African voices as well. To say he is grounded in a history but he wants to take it to the furthest it can go. Because Ama Hem Hem is practically the Neo Maskandi sound. And he takes somebody who was considered a house vocalist, Udonald. And they reinvent the old recipe in a way that is so refreshing. I mean, it's a typical, you know, heartthrob, talking to the women, cis het man song. But look, the way that the musical ingenuity is able to put some life into a very nostalgic and 
understandable South African sound is the genius behind this. By the time you get into that, it feels like you're about at dusk and now we're moving into how to enjoy oneself. Because songs like uh, uh, the ones that take us through the end, Etekwini, uh, and how we go into the last drop of this project, is really an ode to how to decode piano or the sound in today's times. It's not necessarily your formal ama piano. There have been vocalists who have used ama piano as a medium, but this is more about the intimacy and the storytelling. And that's hard to do with ama piano because you can wrestle with the song and what it's trying to do rhythmically, or you can choose open instrumentals that are laid back enough to tell the story while still have that oomph enough in essa scopo for people to feel like they're entering into a beautiful dancing moment of trance. And it does that. It does that to a point where I'm like, this is one of my favorite albums of the year. I'll go as far as saying it's a masterpiece. It took Sinom Solo one, two, three projects to get to a place that not only speaks for what he's always wanted to do, but what is possible with South African vocalists right now. This is a 10 out of 10 for me because it has been so freaking long since we have been able to see an artist that is the perfect, and I say perfect, balance of risk taking whilst taking in the places of what people consider familiar. This project is well sculpted, it's intentional, it's very aware of itself, it's very aware of its environment in the air of Amapiano, in the air of South Africa's Afropop legacy and the question of what a South African vocalist is today, it answers all of those questions. I think Sinom Solo has the crown right now of being the most viable commercial vocalist who is charting a path towards open-ended freedom for South African vocalists to try experiment, anchoring themselves on what has been but having no limit to what they can do themselves. Thank you, Sinom Solo, Eastern Cape representing, but also just South Africanness coming to the foreground in an area where I think right now authenticity has become more and more and more important. Um, I would give a more detailed analysis of this project, but maybe it requires a Sinom Solo insert which I feel is important because here I'm particularly just trying to address the project. But as you probably heard, there's a lot to the story that needs to be unpacked. Maybe this is the story of South African vocalists in general. But what I do know is that it involves Sinon Solo telling us where we need to be. And subsequently, allowing us to think of what home means for us in this time where so many of us might feel displaced in so many ways. My name is VJ, the brother from the ancient mother. It's been a while since we've had a classic and yes it is. 10 out of 10 from me. You heard it share from the Headspace. This is what we're about. We do reviews and a whole lot of other essays just covering where South African, African culture is right now in terms of the arts, particularly the music, but the stories that we feel matter. So if you haven't already subscribed, Press the subscribe button if this is your kind of commentary. Check out the Sinon Solo project. Links in the description. We have a great one.